field that uh, was built in the urine community um, to kind of help urine with its community uh, compensation. So urine is a, a you know pretty large DAO with a lot of uh, invested individuals that since the beginning had been contributing and adding value. Uh, you know everything from from uh, building on top of the protocol to creating memes to uh, you know organizing governance, etc. And pretty quickly, it became clear that they needed some way to compensate this kind of open contribution process, which is uh, fairly typical in the DAO space. And so uh, uh, myself and some of the other contributors came together and developed this tool called Co Coordinate, where the uh, kind of greater mission is to essentially let the contributors allocate funds to each other through a consensus process, uh, kind of decentralizing and pushing out the decisions about compensation to the, uh, to the borders. So uh, what I'll show you here is a off-chain tool that we've built. Um, we launched it in April of last year. And essentially, it's a Web3 platform that allows uh, users to, uh, to log in with their Ethereum address and to uh, give attestations to each other's value and uh, instigate a gifting process within a, a tight group of people uh, within a DAO or within a larger group of people within a DAO. Um, so any questions really quick before I get started? All right, I'll show you how it works. So logging in here. And let me go to a testing circle where I can show you how this, uh, how this looks from a user's point of view. So um, Coordinate is organized into uh, circles. A circle is a group of trusted individuals within a DAO um, that can be added in either by an admin um, or through a consensus process called vouching which essentially allows the circle to kind of grow its own borders through a, a very loose consensus process that I can show you later. Um, when a circle is going through the process of allocation, we call that an epoch. So an epoch is a period of time over which people can give each other gifts uh, to, uh, to represent a budget. And every epoch typically has a budget associated with it. So for instance, at Yearn, uh, once a month, the, court, the community at Yearn has about $70,000 in uh, YFI to distribute out. And uh, they do that over one week at the end of each month. So their epoch is representative of a month of work, but it lasts about a week. So when you first uh, jump into an epoch and you're getting started, you get to write up some text about yourself, let your, uh, your colleagues know what you've been working on, and you can choose to opt in or opt out. Uh, we have that feature because often in DAOs, there's individuals that are paid in other ways. Um, maybe they're taking a salary or they're part of a different circle um, and getting paid that way. Um, so they may want to participate in the circle as givers to be able to vote and give a sense of gratitude to their colleagues without necessarily uh, getting any, any uh, compensation themselves. So I'm opted in in the circle, so I'm just going to continue. So the next step here is that I would get to choose my team. Um, this is a useful feature. It's optional. It depends on how big your circle is often, uh, whether or not you'll want to use it. But that just gives me a chance to kind of isolate the individuals that uh, I might want to give to um, out of a larger group. So in this case, I'm going to look over this group and kind of see who I might have uh, had interactions with over the last month that I felt were valuable, or uh, I really took note of their work and thought it was incredible and want to give them some, some gratitude for that. And I'll select those individuals. And our philosophy is that if everybody kind of does this from their own point of view, not trying to compensation manage the entire DAO, but just to like think about what their own personal experience was over the last month or whatever the period of time is, that you get a pretty accurate picture of value overall. So I'll save my teammates list, uh, sign that transaction, and now I can allocate. So uh, give is not a real token. It's off chain. It's just a marker in a database. Um, and uh, the default is that everybody that's in the circle gets 100 to distribute. So I've already been in the process of distributing over my uh, test epoch. So you can see I have 11 give left to allocate. And I've already given people quite a bit of give. Over the course of the epoch, I can change that. So I can decide that I want to give more to Linus, or Alex test really didn't do very much this month, and I actually don't want to give him that much, and uh, save my allocations until the epoch timer runs out. I can also add notes. So I can let Alex know, um, you know, great work on the docs, et cetera. And, uh, and that's actually a feature that people really get a lot out of, we find, um, that this is a process of compensation, but it's also a really great way to build kind of camaraderie and uh, relationships within the DAO and to kind of formalize the gratitude that you have for working with these individuals over time. So I'll save my allocations and my notes. And uh, essentially, that's it. Um, it's a pretty low weight uh, kind of process for giving. Um, and uh, you know you can either take just a few minutes and kind of go with your gut, or you can be really, uh, really 
like take some time and think very deeply and and look at at the uh, the folks in your circle and think about what you might want to give. So some people take just a few minutes, some people take more time, but it's really up to you. And if people don't allocate during the epoch, their give just gets burned. So it really doesn't. Uh, it just makes everybody else's give more uh, more valuable. Um, so generally, we see about eighty percent participation rate at Yearn, and we consider that to be fine. Uh, that's that's excellent for getting like a good sampling and a good sense of what an, a healthy allocation might be. Um, so I can also go and check in on the map at any time. I'm actually going to switch circles uh, to the Yearn community so we can see a really robust circle. And uh, this map has real-time updates and allows you to kind of get a sense of how value flows throughout the DAO. So the philosophy is that we tend not to reveal uh, numbers. We don't want it to ever feel like you're giving $100 to this person and $200 to that person, although you could do, do some you know, back-of-the-napkin math and kind of figure it out if you really wanted to. But we do use uh, visual displays to get a sense of, like, uh, of how value is flowing. So you can see here uh, you know, uh, that this individual, Zach, he has gotten a lot of give. Uh, he's organizing um, uh, some big stuff at Urine this month, and people have really taken the occasion to give him uh, a lot of gratitude, which he definitely deserves. And um, you can kind of click around and see how the give is flowing to and from him. So his, uh, his give is represented by these orange uh, bars flowing out from him to the other individuals in the, in the circle. And the green bars are people that have given to him. And we think this is a great tool for a number of reasons. First of all, for transparency, we think it's really important. So uh, if there ever, we don't really uh, get a sense that there is a lot of problems with collusion because the kind of uh, game mechanics do not make it worth it to try to kind of uh, to cheat in a DAO. It's, it's better to just be a good actor and, and kind of like participate and you end up getting a lot more rewards in this particular environment. Um, so not a lot of collusion seems to be going on, but if it was, it would be pretty obvious here. We think we would see um, like sort of patterns of circular giving or people that are, uh, are just giving back and forth to each other or something like that. And the DAO could have a conversation about that and figure out what's going on. It's also useful as an asset map. So this is a feature that we're kind of building out over time. Um, but we think that uh, this is really handy, especially in a large DAO, to kind of just get a sense of what's happening in the DAO. What are the different roles and what are people doing? So here you can, uh, if you want to get a sense of who's working on the Discord, you can click in and find uh, Discord through a simple text search right now and see what the networks are that are working on that particular side of community management um, or uh, you know, various terms, so governance, strategy, et cetera. People can tag their own profiles and, and build that out. And uh, right now, this is in a pretty early stage, but we're excited to uh, kind of push this into a space where we think that these uh, profiles are actually going to be uh, fairly public, potentially, if people want them to be. So you'll be able to publish your profiles to a uh, um, here. I'll show you my profile. You'll be able to publish your profile to a, a common space that can add up to a sort of like overall DAO re reputational bank, uh, where people can kind of see what you're involved in. You can tell your story. Uh, add, people can add, do attestations to your skills, kind of like a decentralized LinkedIn. Even though I don't think anybody really likes LinkedIn, we're hoping we can do it a lot better. Um, so by and large, that's kind of like the main features of Coordinate. I, I mentioned also that uh, that the circles can either grow just through admin functions. So we do have a, a pretty robust set of admin tools. You can uh, you know sort of change circle settings. You can uh, have asymmetrical amounts of give if you want to have some people that are kind of like uh, in a more kind of project management kind of role within your circles. Uh, you can edit uh, things relating to your contributors, add them and remove them, etc. Um, but we're also building out like a kind of consensus tools around a lot of that stuff. So the first one that we have is this uh, vouching tool. So you can set it up so that your circle, if you so choose, oops, uh, let's see. If you so choose, you can enable vouching. And then that means that uh, the circle can grow itself at its own uh, direction. So at Yearn, any three members of the circle can, uh, can vouch for another member to become part of the circle. That just means that somebody nominates and two other people second it. And that allows the circle to kind of grow its own borders uh, through a, a consensus process that we think is pretty nice. And uh, you know, you can either make that really tight so that half the circle needs to vouch for a new member or something like that, or you can make it very loose and it could just be one person. Anybody can add anybody in. It's sort of up to the circle how porous its borders might want to be. Um, so yeah, that is essentially the uh, the application for now, um, just to really briefly touch on some roadmap items. So right now, the way that uh, that value actually flows through the system is uh, is not with any custodial features. So essentially, um, the circle creates like a percentage map of uh, how much of the budget is due to each member. And that can be accessed through a CSV. 
And then that CSV needs to be manually processed currently through like Disperse app or through uh, Gnosis Safe has an app that can take the CSV and create a distribution. So there's some kind of like manual processing there. Um, in about, I think, about a month or two months, we're going to be launching our first smart contract, which is a, uh, a vault, which allows the, uh, the funds to be managed through uh, custodial vaults, which can actually interact with urine vaults and yield farm um, while budget is in them. And uh, uses a Merkle tree sync to uh, allow the contributors to pick up those funds themselves out of the vault at their leisure when they feel ready. So you can kind of stack up a bunch of uh, compensation through several epochs and then decide to withdraw it when you want. And you can distribute uh, any ERC20 uh, token currently out of that vault. So that's our next uh, next big item. So yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, all I've got there. Um, but happy to answer any questions if you guys have any questions about how this works or how it might be useful at IOTA. Thank you very much for your presentation. Let's see if, uh, I mean, if anyone has any questions, please just mute yourself. Feel free to ask some. I always say if nobody asks questions, we, means usually that we have been pretty much clear. <laughs> um, I have some um, some questions from my side, of course. So, um, what what moved you to build Coordinate? So, what were the requirements? What were uh, the the things that you felt uh, are missing that needed Coordinate to exist? So, from your experience, so I, I imagine that. Yeah, you probably have already used some other tools before to do something like this, or did you just start straight uh, from coordinate um, and building it? I mean, the uh, the originary reason that we built it was because at Yearn, uh, we wanted to be able to do contributor grants, but there was no con sort of consensus mechanism or decentralized mechanism for doing it. Um, so the process at Yearn was essentially that uh, there was like a committee of people whose job it was to kind of try to get a sense of what was happening in the community and to give accurate allocations of funds uh, just through one-time grants to people that were doing cool stuff that was highly visible or was notable from their eyes. But it was really clear that that was a pretty inefficient process, that you know, who gets to be on that committee is a complicated question. Uh, how much a particular task is worth is very hard to determine. And sort of missing things was sort of a, a constant problem. You know, there's people that are doing really amazing things in DAOs that are not always visible at the center. And, uh, and the periphery really is the best place to find the, that data. So Coordinate came out of the desire to really push those decisions to, this, to the, uh, the extremities so that each individual that's interacting in the DAO has a, an equal say in how those funds get distributed. And they can kind of make their own calls on what they think is valuable and who's been adding to their own experience in the DAO and kind of uh, help drive the DAO from the margins. Beautiful, really beautiful, because I mean, I think this is a, a common challenge of figure out uh, how people are contributing. And um, I mean, even uh, in, in such a big uh, organization, like uh, you showed us before, um, it is pretty much either a gameable way to do things, so either you collect information and data, which might become gameable, or you have people that um, are not aware of what a certain team is doing, and so it's really hard for them to evaluate uh, their contribution to the to the project. So, um, I mean, uh, this is also one of the reasons uh, why I uh, got in touch with you, because I found it uh, really elegant uh, with the idea of the circles and uh, the idea of selecting your teammates because it uh, supports the idea of uh, people evaluating each other and um, evaluating the contribution of people to the whole project, to the whole vision and mission. And you, be, uh, you are evaluated, or let's say, um, the people give to you because they see exactly what you're doing and how important it is for them. Um, did you have any uh, experience from other circles that had difficulties or anything where they asked, special features or uh, something where you said, hmm, I didn't really think about this. I mean, one of the amazing things about Coordinate is that every every different team seems to use it differently. So a lot of our, uh, our features really come out of those conversations and learning how different groups are using it. So like there's teams out there where the biggest value they've gotten is actually organizational and they want to be able to build uh, kind of like more complex organizational models than coordinate. So kind of circles that are nested within circles and ways to distribute budget from one circle to another and things like that. 
So you know that's a sort of upcoming uh, thing that I think that we're thinking about a lot. Um, that's just sort of one example. Or uh, you know, there's some groups that needed sort of a more kind of project managed approach. So it didn't make sense for them to have everybody have the exact same amount of give. So an early feature that we built was uh, just the simple ability for there to be asymmetrical amounts of give. So they can have certain individuals. Um, we actually do this in one of our circles at Coordinate. Actually, certain individuals that are kind of project managers and have a lot of give. And uh, are kind of able to kind of like use that to uh, to help centralize a little bit of process and and manage tickets and things like that. Um, so a little bit of a balance in that kind of circle. So yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of a lot of room for growth. Like we're really excited to introduce uh, strategies at some point so that people can uh, add their own kind of algorithms into the equation and normalize or use things like quadratic funding or or various different equations to kind of modulate the way that distributions happen. Um, or to to control other aspects of the the way the circle has a lifespan. So one thing that a lot of people want to do is to uh, to be able to kind of like control the rate at which you accrue uh, reputation uh, to be able to send give. So when people are newly vouched into a circle, um, maybe they can only send you know uh, half of the give that they can in, after three epochs, and then finally they're like a full fledged member and they have the the ability to really add their voice in a more uh, robust way. So. Yeah, there's a lot of space to to grow, and I think that we're finding that our initial urge uh, at Yearn to do this fairly simple thing uh, has opened up like a whole bunch of different possibilities for DAOs. Like organizational modeling in their DAO can happen through Coordinate, and kind of like gratitude in uh, in general can happen. You can really build a lot of like team coherence and kind of understand more about what your value is to a DAO just through the process of seeing where your give comes from and what happens when you do something particular during a month does it do people really recognize it and what kind of notes you get so uh it's yeah it's it's been really interesting and i think it'll continue to grow and evolve in a lot of interesting ways mm -hmm. i totally agree because i mean as i said already i found it fascinating the first time i saw it because it completely uh put the traditional model where you have uh, let's say the company just giving you uh, um, uh, your share, if we want to say it like that, and uh, it it makes no change how much you work. If you do overtime, if you don't, if you really contributed something really important to the project. While here with the DAOs, we have this opportunity to really um, focus on the importance on the contribution and how this brings forward the mission of uh, what the DAO might have and. Um, it is. Uh, I totally love the concept that you uh, that you built here. Um, another side question. I don't know. Um, I might have to write an issue or a proposal in the in the coordinate Discord. Um, is there some kind of uh, endpoint to not collect data about coordinate in the sense of extract information, but uh, analyze uh, the um, the organizational structures and the uh, uh, let's say the dynamics within the circles for for uh, I don't know academic research for example or something. Well, there's a lot of groups that are interested in that. So actually, one of our major uh, development goals right now is to uh, to kind of redefine our API to allow that kind of like uh, data to become accessible to groups that want to do that kind of thing. Um, so uh, yeah, there's a bunch of projects that want to do it. Some of them are internal, like we do have uh, devs at coordinate that are really eager to kind of like do some data analysis and come up with uh, kind of like metrics around how DAOs are organizing them, th themselves or what's happening, what kind of organizational models and networks they kind of have. And then there's other groups too, like there's a group at Bankless uh, that's doing data analytics and they're building a tool uh, that's going to be uh, using coordinate data to get a sense of like uh, how DAOs are doing this thing from the outside too. So both us and others, I think, are eager to uh, to really access this data and, and find more insights into what DAOs really are. Awesome. So I see that, um, let's say, also this idea is pretty much shared um, ar uh, around the, the different organizations. I've seen that uh, Greg joins. I don't know, Greg, uh, it's not yeah. usual to see you in the European circle. So thank you very much for joining at this time. You bet. Um, I don't know how much you have seen of the presentation. I mean, uh, them really took the time to guide us through Coordinate. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything from your side you would like to ask? Because I know that you're pretty much active or one of the most active uh, members in the learning circle, uh, in the American one. 
Do you have any you know, um, unfortunately, I just dove, dove in. I had another meeting that ran long, and I apologize. Um, so um, I've kind of gone through this uh, quite a bit. I, I just uh, – so coming – I think I just heard the the last bit about the on the analytics. Um, so I don't know at this point. I, I don't know if it would be fair for me to actually dive in. I appreciate you giving the opportunity, but I, um, yeah, I just no missed word. the whole thing. So sorry. No word. No word. Nothing to be sorry about. It has been recorded, so we can have wonderful. A later. wonderful. So again, thank you them for the opportunity uh, to record this. And. Um, is there any kind of limitation? Do we have to keep it, let's say, unlisted, or can we make it public? Just for my understanding. For me, if you want to publicize it, yeah, I don't think it's uh, it's a big deal. Awesome. Yeah, I just wanted to mention, you know, thanks, and uh, and also that you know we're we're really open to talking about um, you know particular use cases for for DAOs. So if you guys want to talk more about how it might be useful for the IOTA DAO or anything else you're involved in, feel free to reach out on our Discord, and you know, uh, be be great to talk. Awesome. Cool. Then thank you from my side and I think also from the group for taking the time. Andy, uh, do I have some questions? I see you popping up. Yeah, yeah. I just have one question kind of with, with this entire process. Do you, like for each of these communications and, and transferring fees uh, or transferring capital to somebody else for their work, do you pay gas fees on those trans transactions as well? Currently, it's uh, it needs to be kind of centrally distributed. So yeah, it is a, a gas transaction. So you know you can do it on any chain. So you can choose to be on a, a side chain and distribute through a, a cheaper uh, means than ETH if you if you do it. Um, when we move to vaults, those are also going to be uh, multi-chain at some point. They are probably going to launch them on ETH, um, and they do have a sort of like more. Uh, I guess that they they push the gas fees out to the claimer, right? So if you're a contributor that's gotten some funds from a circle and it's uh, significant enough that you want to withdraw it from the vault, then you would pay a gas on that. But yeah, it is a, it is a gas and, uh, you know, there is some gas in that transaction. So we think a lot of people may choose to do this on, on side chains um, until we get lower gas on ETH. And, and because of the kind of the inherent cost of participation, the, do you are you limiting part is it acting as a a good use to limit participation so that you don't get inundated with let's say bad actors or is it so limiting that you're you're kind of hitting certain thresholds of size it's a good question i mean i think that like the limiter is probably on the compensation more so right like if a circle has significant funds or they're distributing it out tokens that people are really excited to get then uh you know it's up to the to the to the users more or less like whether or not it's it's worth their time um to distribute or to the to the protocol i guess if the protocol is going to be uh kind of covering the gas costs and distribution um if that community is is you know if there's a, a reason that's worthwhile to to engage in that so like at bankless i think they've had their biggest circle it was like 250 people and it was uh, i think they've done it twice and that's like a retroactive distribution where they just wanted to uh, kind of like give thanks to the community that made them, you know, such a, a strong and robust uh, space to to learn and be part of DeFi. And uh, so, um, you know, I don't think everybody got a ton of of um, of compensation from that necessarily. Although it was also in a, a you know a governance token that may go up in value a lot. So um, I guess the trade offs are really on the sort of like economic side of community building. It's like, is that was that worth it for them to do that? I think you could make the argument that. That yes, they may have covered a thousand dollars or something, maybe more in gas, but they also like really bootstrapped this this amazing community that's become you know more and more uh, active since. Thank you. Um, and have have you seen any I guess any things that cause you worry about the current? current setup like have you seen certain people try to game the system and is, is there a way to act upon that game system without being in such a centralized uh format we haven't seen anybody that's been like you know there's clearly like a civil attack going on and that's like you know problematic etc et i don't think that that's happened yet um but it could certainly um you know i think that like the um 
the ways that we think about combating that kind of thing are two, are two ways. I mean, one of them is just that we think that like uh, a lot of it can be kind of solved on the social layer, right? So like if there is a civil attack going on and there's some bad actors in a DAO, then that's a conversation that needs to happen. And, you know, Coordinate kind of helps surface that. And potentially there will be some cost to it. You know, maybe they'll get a few hundred dollars or something like that. Uh, if it's really egregious, you know, and they're like taking like a $50,000 budget and getting a bunch of bots are getting it, there's plenty of kind of ways to stop that from happening before the distribution happens. Um, but uh, but that, yeah, that, that's like the first line of attack kind of is just like the DAO talking about it and seeing that that's, it's unhealthy and correcting it. And I think that has actually happened a few times. There's been some DAOs where intentions have been surfaced through Coordinate and, you know, there's been some uh, some changes to the to the way that it's uh, the dynamics of that that DAO. Um, and then the other way that we hope we can we might see some some of these issues if they do crop up being handled is through strategies once we get that rolled out that you know there's a lot of programmatic ways that you can really modulate um, the flow of uh, of give and the flow of distributions out of these circles and that once those strategies get uh, kind of activated the same way that they do it with snapshot voting there may be a lot of creative ways that this could be optimized um, you know we have a pretty flat and simple model but that's not necessarily the best model. And we're really psyched for the communities that are using this to start to innovate and and bring uh, you know new findings to the to the way their circles run. All right, thank you very much for I the answer. As well. Yes, please. Yeah, these uh, I was just quickly searching on internet, and I found out that you guys also have a plan for this uh, circle batch NFT and digital identity integration with your coordinate DAO, so is it so that you have a particular approach and kind of mm, kind of timeline for this? And do you think the gas uh, fees would be a problem for and, and kind of limiting factor for that uh, implementations? So that's sort of like a little further down our roadmap than our, our vaults. Um, and we do have some designs and we actually have some contracts already written for it. Um, and essentially what that would be is that right now, uh, when you're a, pre a member of a circle, you're a member of that circle because your wallet address is in a database uh, on our back end. Uh, what we'd like that to be is that instead, when you're a member of a circle, you get to mint an NFT and that sits in your wallet and that becomes the kind of authentication layer for what a circle is. And really, that's what a circle is, is this, this group of NFTs. Um, so we, uh, yeah, we think that there's some value in that, um, but it does feel uh, a little bit further down on the roadmap and I think we need to reinvestigate it. Uh, and see when we end up launching it, just because there's a whole a lot of other stuff that we want to do uh, that may be more impactful. But when we do get around to that, I do think it's probably going to be often in a lower gas chain. I don't think that Ethereum is the optimal way to do that, because you know if you have 50 people in a circle, that's 50 NFTs that need to get minted. And for some protocols, that's just not attractive. So uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll certainly have an aggressive multi-chain approach for if we launch that feature. Uh, just want to throw in on IOTA, there will be NFTs um, basically feelers, but with a deposit, and this deposit will probably be around like two mega IOTA, which is currently a price of what is it like three dollars or something? Yeah, could be interesting maybe for production of lots of NFTs in the future. Pretty good. I mean, yeah, I know that IOTA is a, a really intriguing architecture and would be super psyched to explore, you know. Um, maybe having a version of Coordinate that lives there. Uh, so, let's just start. Let's just not start evangelizing for Yota, okay? We're talking about Coordinate, and we have four minutes. So, last one or two questions, and then we let them go. Uh, I deep thing. On the technical side, what prevents someone from just making multiple, multiple, multiple identities with reputation? I mean, people can make multiple identities. Uh, one of the interesting things about Coordinate is that I think that it's actually, it would be hard to be a useful participant with multiple identities. Like, basically, you're asking others in your community to say that you've done a good job. So, like, you know, I could I could go into the Yearn community and make a new identity and, and talk my way in, maybe, or vouch myself in or something like that. But I would still have to actually be doing enough work that it would be like there's two people. Right, so like, uh, I'm not sure if that's like really, really like a Sybil vector or not. Um, you know, if if there was two members of of, uh, if an individual had two memberships within a circle, 
they would have to do two times the amount of work uh, to get their comrades to give them give and kind of make that worthwhile. Right, right. It's almost like so illogical to spend that much time on it that it would that would happen. I get it. Cool. No, I like that. Thanks. Yeah, we think so. I mean, one of the things we're most excited about Coordinate is that we think it's going to be a really good way to kind of, I, I don't know about solve like the uh, digital identity problem, but it's going to be part of the building blocks of of gaining online reputation for an anonymized identity. So we're working with uh, with uh, MetaDreamer and MetaCred, um, which is a project that's going to be built on Ceramic uh, to kind of like help integrate into that space so that when you're accruing uh, Give in Coordinate, you're also accruing reputation potentially for a D uh, DID if you want to uh, to establish one, and that that can build up to a uh, sort of like an attestation reputation that might be valuable to people. All right. Yeah, OK, that's good. All right, thank you very much um, for taking the time also for the questions to them uh, from my side. Uh, it was a real pleasure to have you with us today. Yeah, thanks, likewise. Looking forward to seeing you guys around. Have a nice one. Thank you very much.